graduation march has finally begun. Music to the ears of these seniors at Knox College in Galesburg, Illinois. Viewed from their angle, it marks the end of a long educational ordeal. But viewed from the pages of an old yearbook, it marks quite a different feeling about the passage of time. It went fast. The years went fast. It just rushes by and you don't know where it goes. And sometimes you wish you could go back and start over again. Good old acquaintance be A gathering of the Knox College class of 1932. A chance to leaf through the pages of an old book not yet completed. A chance to sing the praise of successful people. Men and women flung from the security of a college campus into the midst of the Great Depression. I think many of us who lived through those Depression years really strove to be successful in spite of adversity. And I think maybe that motivation has something to do with it. So the only way I got a job in the Depression was by, by being persistent. I went to Swift and Company's employment office 12 times, once, twice a week, for six weeks, and finally the employment th manager thought I was working there and asked me, where do you work, son? I said, I'm looking for a job. Any job, according to Mary McEldowney Simpson. Well, they were very worried about whether they were going to get a job that would enable them to eat. And when we got out of school, we were very lucky if we could get such a job. The class of 32, it seems, had a story to tell. And in 1939, Life magazine brought it to national attention. Could the typical American dreamers, the graduates of a Midwestern college, pursue their goals in the face of an economic nightmare? It was an unanswered question until this year, when Knox College surveyed those same people and then invited them back to reminisce. Hi. I'm Peg Bosley. I'm and you're Margaret McNamara. How are you? I'm just great. And, and, you were... and she thought I copied it, and she wasn't playing. She gave me a C. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it turned out much better than I thought it would at the time. Uh, I didn't think that I would ever uh, be able to accumulate enough money to own a home have a family and educate them and, uh, and be able to retire uh, at all. The thing that really struck me was when we uh, questioned the class, we asked them all about their lives. Do you know out of 101 replies about their married life, there were only three divorces. The value of family success over monetary gain, a theme preached to a new audience. I suppose within 10 years I'd like to uh, be, I guess, a vice president of some company and, uh, you know, be earning about uh, $80,000 a year. I wouldn't deny that I want to have a good life and lead a good life and, you know, make a nice living, but I think you can do all that and still help others. The class of 32 and the class of 82, separated only by the experience of 50 years. I guess they'll have to take what they can get, but I wouldn't lose sight of what I wanted, and I'd keep trying to get it. Whatever your goals are, be persistent. Don't give up, because uh, a lot of people give up when just around the corner is the answer if they've been persistent and followed through. But it's, it's, it's up to them. It's out there. For today, Mike Leonard, NBC News, Galesburg, Illinois.